Hello everyone, welcome. Today I'm going to discuss about RNA viruses. So let's first start with RNA virus. And for the first important information is that that RNA viruses, most of them are single stranded. But there is one RNA virus which has a double stranded RNA genome, which is Rio Verde. Very important to remember. And there are actually two basic types of RNA depending on the positivity or negativity of the strand. So you have some positive stranded RNA viruses and you have some negative strand RNA viruses. And for positive strand RNA viruses, you have to actually um, create a situation like suppose you are in California and someone invited you over to their retro toga party. And we, when you arrived there, they offered you a flavored corona drink and after drinking it, you also ate some California pickles made by some hippie okay so you went to a retro toga party where you drank where you drank flavored corona and also ate hippie california pickles so retrovirus toga virus flavivirus coronavirus hep e virus calicivirus and piconaviruses are the positive stranded RNA viruses and for negative strand RNA viruses it's very easy to remember always bring polymerase to convert the negative strand into RNA strand and if you can do that if you cannot do that you will fail or fail replication so always bring polymerase or fail replication so RNA virus Bunia virus, paramixo, orthomixo, phylovirus, and rhabdoviruses are the negative stranded RNA viruses. And most of the RNA viruses replicate in the cytoplasm because you know your RNAs are also present in the cytoplasm, and that's why the RNA viruses would also like to go in the cytoplasm and replicate there. But exception is influenza virus and retrovirus which actually uh, replicate in the uh, nucleus and there are some RNA viruses which have a non-enveloped non capsid which is CPR to a naked hippie so you can remember uh, you are giving CPR to a naked hippie so Cali C, Picona and Rio C, P and R and also hippie for Hep E virus and there are some RNA viruses which have a segmented genome and the mnemonic for them to remember is BOR so Bonilla, Orthomexo, RNA and Rheovirus and you can remember that those three viruses in the upper panel those are actually the viruses which are also negative strand so those are negative strand and also segmented but Rheovirus is a positive strand virus a non envelope virus and also has a segmented genome so you first start with real virus doesn't have any envelope and very importantly it has a double stranded RNA genome it has an icosahedral structure and there are two main viruses in the real virus group one is cultivirus causes the Colorado tick fever and another is rotavirus which is the number one cause of fatal diarrhea in children very important to know so we first talk about the rotavirus, which is a DSTNA virus, and it's also uh, segmented because it's part of the BOR, Bunia, Orthomexo, RNA, and Rheovirus. So it has a segmented genome, and it especially causes diarrhea in winter in daycare center and kindergartens. And the way by which it can cause diarrhea is that it first infects the villi, and there is destruction of the villus, and they are followed by atrophy and that's why there will be decreased absorption of sodium and potassium leading to loss of those electrolytes and the patient gets rehydrated and also gets electrolyte imbalance very easily and that's why the CDC recommends routine vaccination of all infants now we have another group which is the coronavirus so California pickles so it is a naked virus so no envelope and it's a positive strand virus okay 
it's also a positive strand virus and it's, and uh, the viruses in picoviruses group you can remember them by a mnemonic which is park on a peak or pico so parch p e r c h so we have the polio for the p eco rhino coxsackie and hem hepatitis a virus and the polio virus you can remember that is uh, almost uh, close to eradication and the way that is eradicated uh, outside the world in the outside world is sabin vaccine which is a live attenuated vaccine and the swamp vaccine which is an injected injectable and kill vaccine and another virus is ecovirus which can cause aseptic meningitis actually uh, most of the vi those viruses can cause aseptic meningitis rhinovirus it can cause common cold because you see the rhino means nose and common cold like rhinitis coxsackie virus can cause multiple diseases like aseptic meningitis harpangina where there is mouth blisters and fever and something called a hand foot mouth disease and very importantly myocarditis is a very important cause of viral myocarditis very important can also cause pericarditis and hepatitis a virus can cause acute viral hepatitis in children especially and most of them are enteroviruses and that's meaning is that they're spread fecorally except rhinoviruses and you see the name Pico, picorna it has the rna inside the name so pico rna virus so those are small rna viruses and this rna is actually translated to one large polypeptide which is later cleaved and gives off the needed proteins for the viruses okay next rhinovirus which is a part of the picorna virus group or family it's a non-enveloped virus and it's most common cause of common cold and the cause why it is not an enterovirus is actually it's very susceptible to gastric acid and that's why it cannot infect the GI tract unlike the other piconoviruses which all of them can infect the GI tract hep E virus is another RNA virus doesn't have any envelope because you give CPR to a naked hippie so hippie naked hippie so it's naked so no envelope and it has a single stranded RNA unlike or, or like most other RNA viruses it is positive strand because hippie California pickles and also linear genome and it's ichthyhedral and importantly hepatitis E virus hep E hep E so hepatitis E virus is an important member of hippie virus family Calici virus same CPR to a naked hippie CPR for C Cali C so it doesn't have any envelope positive strand because uh, you have the California pickles okay so positive strand and one of the important viruses in Cali C virus group is norovirus which can cause viral gastroenteritis another group is flavivirus and it has <coughs> multiple <coughs> viruses in it multiple important viruses and flavivirus is an envelope virus and it's positive strand because you are you were drinking flavored corona so flavored corona positive strand and it has multiple viruses like hepatitis c virus yellow fever john De dengue st louis encephalitis and west nile virus and yellow fever virus is uh, one of the important member of flavivirus group which is also an arbovirus meaning that it can be actually transmitted by arthropod like Addis mosquito and its reservoir can be human or can be monkey actually flavi means yellow or jaundice and yellow fever virus actually can present with jaundice and fever but it can also have black vomitus and as actually yellow fever virus infects the liver and can cause apoptosis of the hepatic cells you can see something called the councilman bodies which is eosinophilic apoptotic globules on liver biopsy now we come to the toga virus so you are going to a retro toga party which was a positive strand party so it is positive strand and the three important viruses in this group are rubella eastern equine encephalitis and western equine encephalitis so rubella is one of the important toga virus and it causes rubella also known as 
German measles and the important things are as it is an infection it will be causing fever and it will be causing a lymphadenopathy especially in the posturicular region and most importantly a fine rash and in case of children the disease is mild but if a child is infected from the womb of the mother it can cause a serious congenital disease and in case of congenital rubella the findings will include blueberry muffin appearance like the, the one you eat uh, which is very delicious and it's actually indicative of extramedullary hematopoiesis so here you can see some rubella rash so rubella rash in the children maybe if you palpate here you can find a post auricular lymphadenopathy and maybe this child also has fever and here you can see a child which has a blueberry muffin appearance due to congenital rubella infection retroviruses are very important and also you are as you are going to a retro toga party it's positive strand and it has reverse transcriptase that's why it can convert its RNA genome into a DNA DNA and two important viruses in retrovirus family are human T cell leukemia virus which can cause T cell leukemia and HIV which can, which can cause AIDS acquired immunodeficiency syndrome coronaviruses are another group of uh, RNA viruses so you are drinking a flavored corona so it's a positive strand virus and coronavirus can cause common cold and SARS severe acute respiratory syndrome orthomyxovirus a very important member of RNA viruses and as you can remember from the mnemonic for negative strand RNA viruses always bring polymerase or fail replication so or for orthomyxovirus so those are negative strand RNA viruses and also is part of the segmented genome it has eight segments in the genome so you can remember the another mnemonic which was bore b o a r so bonia virus orthomyxovirus RNA virus and rheovirus so you have the orthomyxovirus which has a segmented genome and most of most important member of the orthomyxovirus family is influenza virus so let's talk something about influenza so influenza viruses as a part of orthomyxoviruses has a negative strand RNA with eight segment genome and the most important virulence factors are hemagglutinin which helps its entry and neuroaminidase which promotes a release of progeny virion and if someone gets an influenza especially if an older person gets an influenza infection he is more he or she is more likely to have a fatal bacterial superinfection most commonly by staph aureus streptococcus pneumoniae and hemophilus influenzae and influenza viruses have this nasty tendency of changing its genetics rapidly and that's why it can actually cause epidemics or pandemics and that's why you, most of the cases you have to vaccinate so you have to give a flu shot during the flu season which actually contains the most likely viral strain that could be encountered in a flu season and most frequent vaccine is kill vaccine but there are also live vaccines live attenuated vaccine which are applied intranasally and those are actually temperature resistant strains which uh, can replicate inside the nose but cannot replicate inside the lung so here we have the some features or some genetic ch uh, change patterns of influenza viruses so there can be some change a big change known as genetic shift or antigenic shift and there can be some minor changes known as genetic drift or antigenic drift so if there is a big change it will cause a pandemic and this occurs actually due to reassortment of the viral genome segments such as uh, segments of human flu virus can be reassorted with segments of swine flu virus actually this was the cause of the 2009 swine flu endemic and genetic drift is a minor change can cause epidemics and it's actually due to random mutation in the hemagglutinin or neuroaminidase genes so you can remember sudden shift is more deadly than gradual drift so sudden shift pandemics gradual drift epidemics so you have the next group of the RNA viruses which are paramyxoviruses and those are also negative strand because you can remember always bring polymerase 
or failed replication. So polymerase is for paramyxovirus. virus. And uh, the, there are four important viruses in the paramyxoviruses virus group. You can remember them from, from the name of the paramyxovirus. So P for parainfluenza, R for RSV or respiratory syncytial virus, and M for two diseases. One is measles and another is mumps. So parainfluenza uh, virus can cause croup and actually presents like a slim-like barking cough and respiratory syncytial virus can cause bronchiolitis in babies and you can treat it with rivavirin and the amps for measles and mumps. Most of the viruses in this group have surface F or fusion protein which causes the respiratory cell to fuse and form multinucleated giant cells. And there is something called a palivizumab which is a monoclonal antibody against the fusion protein and it prevents the pneumonia in, by RSV in children. Okay, so it actually prevents the fusion of the epithelial cell and formation of multinucleated cells. So here you have the croup, so which is caused by parainfluenza. So this is actually an inflammation of the larynx, trachea, and the bronchi. So acute laryngotrachea bronchitis, and it's actually manifested as a seal-like barking cough due to obstruction of the upper airway, which also can lead to inspiratory stridor. And the obstruction or the narrowing of upper airway can be seen as a steeple sign on chest x-ray and in case of severe croup it can lead to pulses paradoxes due to upper airway obstruction so here you can see an x-ray and where there is the there is the this is the trachea lower part of the trachea but as you get above the trachea is actually narrowed down like a steeple so this is the steeple sign occurs due to parent infection of the upper respiratory tract or laryngotracheal bronchitis so measles is another part of the paramyxovirus family and its most important symptoms you can remember them by 3C of measles. The patient will have cough, coryza or cold and conjunctivitis. Those are the three C's of measles. So the patient will actually present with fever and then it will be followed by cough, coryza and conjunctivitis. And ultimately the patient will have some typical, very typical and classic clinical findings which is one is complex spot and it will be followed by a maculopapular rash which starts at the head and neck region and then it will spread downward and also uh, you can have lymph adenitis and there can be some paracortical hyperplasia and formation of some giant cell which are called Werdin Finkelde giant cell uh, which are actually fused lymphocyte in a background of paracortical hyperplasia so again you can remember that the paramyxoviruses have something called the fusion protein or F protein. So that's why it can cause fusion of multiple cells depending on which cell it's infecting. So as I've already mentioned, respiratory syncytial virus can cause syncytial formation in the lungs and also the measles virus can cause a giant cell formation by fusion of lymphocytes also known as Werdin Finkelde giant cell. And there are three important complications of a measles infection. It can lead to acutely encephalitis and giant cell pneumonia especially in immunocompromised and after some years it can lead to subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis and measles is associated with a reduction of vitamin a level in your body and that's why you have you can supplement a baby with vitamin a which will actually reduce the mortality in measles affected child so here we can see coplic spot in which is present in the primary stage of the measles so you have see you can see the whitish whitish blue region at the center surrounded by a uh, eridematous region which is present at the buccal surface and also here is another one is at a white area in the center surrounded by an eridematous border so those will be followed later by maculopapular rash which is you can see here so the rash actually starts from the upper part of the body especially the head and face region and then spreads to the lower parts of the body too so mumps is another paramyxovirus which is uncommon due to MMR vaccination but if it infects a person it first starts as a paroditis but in case of a male child it can cause parchitis in case of a female child it can cause euphritis and also very importantly it can cause aseptic meningitis so if it causes a bilateral orchitis in a child it can cause sterility especially after puberty so here you can see mom's paroditis enlargement of the parotid gland in a child maybe he, she was not vaccinated well and Another group, important group of RNA viruses are rhabdovirus. So as you can remember from our mnemonic, always bring polymerase or else 
fail replication. So replication for rhabdovirus. And rhabdoviruses are negative strand viruses. And one of the most important uh, virus in the rhabdovirus family is rabies. So rabies is a bullet shaped virus, very important to know. But more important is negri bodies, which are actually some, uh, some inclusion, intracellular inclusions found in uh, Parkinson cells of the cerebellum and the hippocampal neuron. Rabies actually has a long incubation period before symptom onset. And that's why you, ha you have to do a post-exposure prophylaxis, which is first you have to clean the wound and then you have to give a kill vaccine and also a rabies immunoglobulin. So rabies first starts uh, from the distal areas of your body and then it travels through your exons to the CNS. So it, it does by a retrograde fashion and it after binding to acetylcholine receptor. And rabies actually progresses fast it, and the patient presents with fever and then the patient has malice and agitation, photophobia and most importantly hydrophobia. The patient will have a severe spasm of his upper airway muscles and upper esophagus due to uh, when he tries to uh, have, have some water. So he will be very hydrophobic and also the patient will have hypersalivation, ultimately have paralysis of the muscles and ultimately coma. It's most commonly from bat, raccoon and skunk bites uh, in case in the US uh, than from dog bites. So dog bites are more common in the uh, other countries. But in case of US, you have the bats, raccoon and skunk bites causing more rabies than dog bites. So here you can see a bullet shaped rabies virus. So this is a bullet shape. This is another, this is another. And you can see maybe this is a, a neuron in the CNS and maybe in the Parkinson's cells or hippocampus. And you can see some intranicular inclusions here, 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 here. So those are the negri bodies found in CNS. Another group of uh, RNA viruses are filoviruses, which are, as you can remember, always bring polymerase or fail replication. So fail for phylo. So filoviruses are negative strand viruses. And one of the important virus, filovirus is Ebola, hemorrhagic fever, which is often fatal. So Ebola virus is a filovirus. It actually targets the endothelial cells, the phagocytes, and also hepatocytes. And as uh, the Ebola virus is a hemorrhagic fever, actually it can cause uh, DIC and diffuse hemorrhagic shock. And actually fast as a virus, it fast presents the flu-like symptoms, then it can also cause diarrhea or vomiting, high fever. But the most important thing you have to remember that it can cause some bleeding manifestation because it's a hemorrhagic fever. And that's why it, it has a high mortality rate and you have you do not have any definitive treatment you can only support the patient with uh, ventilation or other supports or volume supports and to prevent the uh, transmission of Ebola you have to do a strict isolation of infected individuals and barrier practice for healthcare workers and actually transmission for transmitting the Ebola you have you need direct contact with body fluids or fomites including dead bodies and it's a very high incidence of nosocomial infection that's why you have to segregate the Ebola patients so here you can see the Ebola virus RNA virus is another group of RNA virus as you can remember always bring polymerase or fail replication so always for RNA so RNA virus is a negative strand virus and also it's a segmented genome virus because BOR B -O -A -R. so the BOR so Bonilla virus, Orthomyxovirus, RNA virus and Rheovirus. So those are the segmented viruses. And you have two important RNA viruses. One is LCMV and one is Lassa fever. So LCMV is lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus. And Lassa fever and cephalitis is a disease which is spread by rodents. Another virus viral group is Bonilla virus. Always bring. So bring for negative strand. And it has a multiple strains. One causes California encephalitis virus. One is sandfly or reef valley fever virus and not can also cause Crimea and Congo hemorrhagic fever and another virus is hunter virus which can cause hemorrhagic fever and pneumonia. So California encephalitis, sandfly or reef valley fever, Crimea and Congo hemorrhagic fever, hunter virus which can cause hemorrhagic fever and pneumonia. So you see there are some hemorrhagic fevers in the lower parts and California and sandfly. And Delta virus is also a negative strand virus 
and it has a very uncertain shape and it's actually a defective virus that requires the presence of hepatitis B virus to help it replication by giving it the HPSAG to replicate. So that's all from me today and thanks for watching my video and stay tuned for more. I, I will have some more presentations on HIV and hepatitis B very soon.